The last chemical that I want to talk about in the advanced version of pool school is cyanuric acid. We call it conditioner. What that does is that helps to keep the chlorine in the water. Chlorine in its natural state is a gas. Well, what conditioner is is a buffer solution. It attaches itself to the chlorine to hold it in the water. So as it's exposed to ultraviolet light, or if the pH gets way out of whack, but mostly for the ultraviolet light, as it's exposed to ultraviolet light, it does not turn back into a gas and go away. Now, cyanuric acid is one of those chemicals that the EPA loves. If you put it in your swimming pool, cover it up, a hundred years from now, if the water is still there, conditioner will still be in the water. It doesn't go away. That's why conditioner is a once a year treatment. We recommend your water is professionally tested the second year to see how much conditioner you need to add only for the amount of water that you've added as you open your pool. You don't have to retreat the foundation water. Now the second time that you might want to have it tested would be in July or August to see how much conditioner you need because again you'll have added water from splashing and evaporation. You'll have added a lot of water over the course of the pool season that you may need to add a little bit to a little bit more conditioner. Now remember if you add too much conditioner it will slow the chlorine down. The chlorine will not be able to react the way it should. Too little conditioner, ultraviolet light is going to hit it and it's going to evaporate way more than it should. So there's an optimal amount of cyanuric acid or conditioner in your water. The last thing we want to talk about is algicides. Now there are a lot of different types of algicides. You know, I personally recommend copper algicide. But there's a little bit we have to talk about with copper algicide, its use, and how you test for it. First of all, copper goes into the water and it's very, very stable. The only way the copper comes out of the water is it comes out in your hair or on your arms. That's how it comes out. Copper doesn't really kill anything so much as it inhibits its growth. Its presence in the water keeps an algae from growing. It inhibits photosynthesis. As you remember from second grade, photosynthesis is how a plant feeds itself. Well, copper being in the water, it keeps the plant from performing photosynthesis, the algae, from performing photosynthesis, and it dies. So copper algicide isn't the fastest way to kill algae. Chlorine is, because it goes in and kills it. But algicide keeps the algae from growing. It inhibits its growth. By having a little copper algicide in the water, it keeps algae from ever forming. That's why I said in the basic pool school that really it's an insurance policy. If you forget to add chlorine, you don't have enough chlorine in the water, it rains, whatever happened, if you have a little copper algicide in the water, you won't get algae formation. Now, we'll talk about algicide a little bit. In chlorine water chemistry, I always say more is better. If it's, say, oh, test at three, get it up a little bit because there's so many things that bring your chlorine level down, you might as well keep it a little bit high. Just make sure you keep your pH in balance. Copper is the other way. Chlorine water chemistry, more is better. Copper water chemistry, less is better. Keep in mind, the, the copper isn't just coming out of the water. It's not getting used up, like chlorine gets used up. Copper doesn't do that. Its presence in the water works. But there's a downside. Too much copper in the water well, let me give you a good example of how you test for too much copper. Take a little blonde girl, stick her in the head in the water, not too long, pull it out, and if her hair comes out green, you have too much copper in the water. That's the problem with too much copper. If you have too much copper in the water, you can hurt, turn the children's blonde hair green. You can actually even stain the pool or stain the pool liner. So you don't want ever too much copper. Follow the instructions on the bottle. Whatever it says, that's what you add. And if anything, not too much. I know I use the example to customers all the time that I look at chlorine water chemistry the way I do doing the laundry. You know, when it says add a quarter of a cup or add a cup, you know, I pour that in the wash machine and I add a little bit more and pour that in. Because, you know, too much isn't going to hurt, can only help, right? Well, copper's the other way. Chlorine water chemistry is like that. Copper water chemistry says add a quarter of a cup. Yeah, it might be too much. You know, I, I won't go down. Copper water chemistry, you always want to go down. Chlorine water chemistry, you always want to go up. So, as a recap, we've talked about alkalinity, talked about pH, 
how chlorine works, um, what cyanuric acid does, and what you have to be careful for in using copper algaecide. Now, to avoid the green and the stain and the mistakes and things like that, there are lots of other algaecides out there. There's silver algaecide, very, very effective, a little bit more expensive than copper. There are some non-mineral algaecides. These are kind of polychemicals. There's lots and lots of chemicals in them. And those are also effective algaecides, but generally those are not as effective as copper and usually a little less expensive. And frankly, I just think copper is the best. We offer all of them. All of the other ones are available. Um, frankly, I think copper algaecide is the, way, the best way to go. You can see that water chemistry is very simple. You add your chlorine, test your pH and alkalinity, of course, keep some cyanuric acid in the pool, add some algaecide. Again, you should never spend more than 15 or 20 minutes on your pool a week on water chemistry. We're family and fun, come together.